Hello everyone and welcome back to UE5 BP Guru. It's been a while. It's been a while. Only because uh, I've been incredibly busy uh, with uh, sort of school holidays for the children and sorting things out for this game you're looking at right now. Um, so uh, I've been working on the code. It's uh, just kind of adding in some animations and things like that to the game and um i thought i'd do a tutorial on it because it is kind of annoying to get right um at least i found so anyway so the way i've set this up is uh i'm using animation montages and i think uh, i've seen a couple of comments already in earlier uh, episodes where people are also doing the same uh, and i think it's the right way to go so I'm going to hopefully show you how I implemented animations and I'll, I'll show them off working hopefully as well. So I, I created a strut. Uh, I love my struts and my data tables and my branches. You'll know this about me, but um, I don't need the ring more name. I found I, I've worked this one out. I didn't need the ring more name. I would have had uh, I used just the strut, but I didn't. So Basically, uh, I'm using animation montages uh, variables, uh, as you can see. I, well, I won't show you the drop, drop down, but uh, there are anim montages there. They are just variables I've, I've clicked. If I create a new one, I'll show you how to find it. If you just put in anim montage, there it is, and you just click the object reference. Simple as that. Uh, and I've created a few that I'm using within my battle system, basically. Um, so. Some of these won't be necessary. Some of them will be. Um, I might need to add more or less. Uh, I'm still tweaking it for my game um, while I'm running through the code. But uh, yeah, create that and then right click and create it into a data table. Or you might have to just right click and create a data table. I think that's probably the way to do it. Uh, wherever it is. Miscellaneous. There it is. Yeah, miscellaneous data table. There you go. Um, and I created it and I called mine creature animation. Open it up and you should get something that looks a bit like this. You can add new rows and every time you add a new row, name it to the creature. Hence why we didn't need the ringmon name in the end. Um, so every row name should be named the same as your creatures. And then down here, you should have all these wonderful options. Uh, the only one I've done so far is tail flame. But as you can see, I've started adding in some animation montages for them. Um, the next thing you'll want to do uh, to actually create the animation montage is if you go to wherever your creatures are created, tail flame, uh, find the animation that you're using, right click it and go up to create and then create an in montage. It should be as simple as that, but there is one final step you will have to do at some point or another. You will probably have made a animation BP which obviously I used, in, I did in a previous episode where we used the walking and idling and, and the running animations for running around the map with our creature. Um, if we open that up, slowly but surely, if we open that up, there it is. Um, we should have this, a default slot. And to get that, we right click and we just put in default slot. There you go, slot, default slot. And it's for montages because every montage comes equipped with the default slot. It just allows the montage to take over what's happening here in the state machine. So basically this is our idle and walk we created in the last episode that allows our creature to uh, walk around. I'm going all over the place here. What am I trying to do? Get back here. Um, this allows us to basically do the normal kind of uh, idle walking and, and all that sort of good stuff. And that will just bypass through this default slot uninterrupted uh, continually. So it'll just continuously be an idle walking and running forever until we play an animation montage in which this will pause this and play this animation until it's completed and then allow this to re-bypass through and take over. So it's kind of like a stopping point. It pauses this... Um, locomotion to allow you to play your animation montage and then it allows it to be to bypass through when it's finished that's kind of the best way to look at it uh, in my opinion 
So once you've set up and added that uh, default slot into your Anim BP, you'll have to do this for obviously every creature. Just bear that in mind. Uh, and you'll also have to set one of these up for every creature as well. But once that's done, um, you should have everything you need to, to get started um, in, in getting the animation working. So let me show you it first, and then I'll show you the actual animation montage node because there's a couple of factors in that animation montage node that we need to kind of address uh, i do have a trainer here because i'm using him to battle it saves me running down the route every time um now before you set this up the one thing you need to make sure is that every creature you have in your game has its animation set up because if it doesn't you're not going to be able to bypass through the battling and continue testing other things so be sure to probably make this the last thing you do, um, but obviously keep it in your mind when you're coding because you're going to need to add it in and it will eventually break some things. So let's use Flare. There he goes. Woo! Does his nice little animation, uh, and he's also got inflicted with burn. You can see at the top right here, um, and then I've also been burned, but mine doesn't show up for some reason. I'm still fixing that one. But that's also something I'm working on. Oh, God, I'm trying to do things way too fast. Um, <laughs> so he's been inflicted by burn. You see he did his burn animation. If I bash him now, he does like a cool kind of jump forward and a little backflip. Very cute animation. Um, he's going to do his flare again. He's only got one move. I only gave him one move to test things out. I'm testing this uh, status effect for us. I got theirs working, but mine's currently not working. So, and we won, I think. Did we win? No, we lost. Oops. No, no, don't fight. Don't fight him again. Don't fight him again. So, um, whoops. Uh, let's just get rid of that. It's fine. It's where I cancelled this happening. Um, so. So. You saw the animations working there. Obviously, it was a bit laggy because I'm trying to do too many things on my potato laptop. But uh, I will be upgrading it soon. So, let's head into uh, the battle proxy and we can take a look at what's happening so there's a few things happening here that i've added in already i've tidied this up by the way that's why it looks a bit neater than it was so let's go from the very beginning for a second until we find something so we're starting the battle proxy off uh now this should never happen which is good so that's fine we set the MB, uh, NPC visibility. That's what's happening in that fight now, um, which is this. We, we determine whether it's actually an encounter. And if it's true, we, we just access that one BP, the only one that will ever be in the world, and set it to visible or not. Um, the next thing we do is we spawn the encounter or the trainer party team. We've been through all this before. I'm not going to waste too much time. But the difference, the key difference is here. Uh, is that um, what we're doing is uh, we have this enemy animation select. That's the first function I've created for this animation side of things. Now, I've seen a couple of comments um, saying that they're using... I'll, I'll cover this first, actually, because this, this makes more sense. You're going to be using this node to play your montage. And... Um, a lot of people are saying they, they've plugged the animation in, but there's there's nothing in here for the skeletal mesh component. And the reason for that is we need to determine what we're actually setting, that we're playing the animation on, right? So in this instant, we're actually, we've already created the variable for this within our the rest of the battle code. And we actually do this when we spawn the creature in. So when we spawn this creature in, we set this variable called encounter ringmon. We also do the same thing for the player. We call it party ringmon. Uh, and this actually is pretty darn useful because we can now plug that encounter in directly into the skeletal mesh component, which you'll see here I've got mesh. So when we go into this, you'll see where that actually takes place. But um, yeah, it was really useful. I actually did it purely by accident. I, I didn't necessarily intend to do that. We, we only did that so we can destroy the actor at the end when it, when it uh, is defeated. But um, here we go. We, we, we can, we've got another use for it. So we get the play montage node. That has to sit on the main event graph. But the enemy animation select 
uh, we can put into a function because this is quite a big beasty um, kind of function in the grand scheme of things. And we don't really want that several times all over our code. So we get in the third person character. This is for the uh, enemy, by the way. So we got the current ring one. We break its uh, info. We break it again to get the name. And then we're using that name to drive this data table. Hence why I said this needs to be correct. So for example, we get tail flame. And so tail flame goes into here. We get tail flames row. And then it breaks that information. We break that information to get the list of uh, animations. And then we just stick them all into the return node. Now, that encounter ring one variable, we get that. We get the mesh for that. And then we plug that into the top. I always make sure that goes in first so it sits at the top so we know where it is because it's a pain if we lose it. Uh, and then we basically just then need to decide what animation we want to use. So in this example, we want to spawn. And then we, once we've done that for the enemy, we then move over to our player. Um, we check for our ringmon and then we do all of that sort of stuff. We spawn it. And the same thing happens in here where we set that as our party ringmon. Uh, and then we play that animation. Again, same thing, but in this one, we use the selected party mon instead, instead of using the encounter, the current ring mon or whatever it is that we're facing. Uh, and same again here, we use that party ring mon um, variable. We do a get of that, get the mesh, and then we we run it on there. Um, and we plug that both in, same thing. And I'm using all of my animation montages on the on completed. That way, so there's lots of different things happening here, but for example, we have a camera switch. If I set it to look at my player, I then play the animation. But if I don't have it on, if I don't have it on completed, but I have it on the top one, for example, it will move straight straight away onto the next part of the code. So it's going to go, okay, play the montage, but then change my camera to the overall view, and you'll see that happening on the overview instead of looking at it up close. So. It is important that we um, make sure it's done on the completed, not on uh, anything else, really. Um, now, there are some limitations with this that uh, I, I experienced when adding in the attacking animation. So if I go to that section, and you can see what I've had to do here myself. So... For example, now I'm still adding animations into mine, so mine's not fully completed yet. But just bear this in mind that um, if you do it on completed here, um, this code is set up to loop, or it was set up to loop um, continually till it's done every single attack. So if we had uh, a chance of three attacks, it would loop three times, but instantly because functions they try and uh run the code immediately as fast as it can right so what i found i had to do was because this was connected up it was constantly trying to loop back around and what was happening was the animations were looping incredibly fast so that they were jittering um for several moments while it was trying to work out what to do so what i did was i made i took the multi-hit uh, function and made this happen on its own and without the loop uh, mechanic the proceed mechanic this actually isn't needed anymore um, technically but um, what we did is I now run this and then it runs this runs the animation fully then it does the damage then it works out if there's another move and if it does have another move to do it just reruns this multi hit but if it doesn't it will then go to this continue player tag and then work out if it has stat ability, enemy condition, etc. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of how it works. And then uh, it does its enemy health check and carries on as normal. And obviously this has to work the same way uh, for the enemy as well. So same thing's happening here. You know, it, it, I've broken that connection. The only reason this is still connected is if it's not a physical attack, it needs to go into a special attack, uh, which again, I need to add the animations in for a, a specific special attack. The, all I'm doing now is working out how I'm going to run that when I'm doing physical and uh, special 
attacks here because if it has also a stat attack i don't want it to run down here and then do also another animation for a stat attack as well um and then we also need to work out if we need to look at a um doing a enemy uh afflicted animation which i probably will but i need to add that in as well so hopefully this has helped you work out a little better bit of a better way to do um uh, montages in this ringmon or pokemon clone tutorial um i also had to change my end turn uh section i i, I want to rework it again but for now um basically what i realized was is uh, i need to determine if they're actually afflicted um because if they're not we can just move on but if they are we need to play animations and bring up dialogue boxes so this kind of extra bit of code was for that basically so yeah so yeah um anyway hopefully you found this useful um and it will help you to add in your animations into the game a bit more effectively uh the reason for this branch here by the way is just depending on whether it's a special move or not if it is it does a different like you saw it with the bash and the flare but yeah, hope it's helpful. Um, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, if you you're not if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you've been here before and you're subscribed, I appreciate all the support. It really really means a lot. Uh, and I will see you in the next episode. Much love. Take care. Bye.